Hi and welcome back to our Dreamweaver tutorial. In this video we're going to learn how to set up a simple contact form on our contact page. In a later video we're going to learn how to make uh, more complex forms but for right now we're going to focus on just getting a simple functional form set up. So I'm going to go ahead and go into Dreamweaver and I'm going to go ahead and open up my contact page. Now we're actually going to um, learn how to create this form in three steps. The first step that we're going to learn is how to set up the HTML on our page. The second step, after we get the form basically set up and we know that it's working, is to add the validation script that we're going to use um, for this form so that we can test for things like required values. And then finally the third step we're going to go through is going to be setting up the CSS for this form. Uh, making it look the way we want um, it to look. So three parts, we're going to set up the HTML and get the form working. We're then going to go ahead and set up the validation. And finally, we're going to work on the CSS so that our form looks the way we want it to um, look. So I'm here in code view right now and I'm going to scroll down to my uh, content area here. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete a good block of this information because we're not going to want that on our page. I am going to leave the heading on the page obviously and I'm just going to uh, leave these two paragraphs of uh, text in place as well. But now, whoops, but now we have a place to put our contact form. Now, to begin our form we need to go ahead and create a form tag. And when I open tags, I usually like to close them right away. In between the opening and closing form tag are going to be all the fields that you're going to uh, create that build your form. Now, the form tag actually requires a few different attributes to be added. The first attribute that we're going to add to the opening form tag is going to be the method, the method attribute. And the method attribute needs to be set for post. Don't worry about what that means right now, but um, that basically um, tells the server you handle um, the submit for this. And the second attribute that we need to add is going to be the action attribute. And for right now, we're going to leave that blank. That's actually later on going to hold the script that's going to process this form for us and send it to us as an email. And then two more attributes that we need to add. We need to add the name attribute. And you can call your form, name your form, whatever you want. In this case, I'm just going to call it Form 1. And then finally, we need to add an ID attribute. And again, I'm going to go ahead and call it uh, form one or you could call it my contact form you know whatever you want to um, um, do there so now that we actually have a spot for our form to um, go on our page we need to actually put the fields in now when you're looking at a completed contact form a field actually has a couple different parts to it it has the label that identifies what the field is for, and then it has the actual box that the individual types in. And you need to define those both um, to create a proper field. Now, before we actually create a field, we need to actually set up some structure so that later on we can format our form correctly. And just as we, uh, it's standard practice to put navigation elements into ULs, into unordered lists, it's fairly standard practice to use OLs or ordered lists to give structure to a form. And again, this form doesn't have anything to do with an ordered listing, but we're going to use those elements to give us sort of handles so that we can format it um, the way we, the form the way we want in exactly the same way as when we uh, set up our social media or our um, 
top navigation, we use the UL item. So I'm going to go ahead and open up an ordered list here. And again, I always close right after I open it up. And then we're going to go ahead and create some list items here. Now, each individual form element is going to go in its own list item in this ordered list. And the first thing we want to do is we want to create a label for the first field that's going to be in our contact form. And our contact form is going to be uh, very simple, very straightforward. It's going to have a spot for the person's name, a place for the person to enter their email address, their phone number, a comment field, and a submit button. So we're not going to be um, creating a huge number of fields in this form. But when you want to create a label, that's the exact tag that you use, label. And then you type in the name of the label you want to use. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and type full name. And then I'm going to go ahead and close my label tag. Now, your label tag can be left alone just like this. But preferably what you're going to do is you're going to put in an attribute called for and that's going to identify what input field this label is for. So I'm going to go ahead and use the for attribute and just type in name or we'll do full name here. So now we have our label that's going to appear. The next thing we need to do is we need an input text box. So again, we're going to go ahead and type in a field, and that field is going to be called input. We need to know the type of input field this is going to be. It could be a drop down list, it could be a check box, or it could be just a regular text box that people are allowed to type in. So I'm going to go ahead and use the attribute type and the value that I'm going to go ahead and put in is text. So this is an input type. Uh, this is a text type input field. And the next thing that I'm going to need to do is I need to put the name attribute in. So I'm going to go ahead and type in name and this name should match the for attribute in your label. So I'm going to go ahead and type in full underscore name right there. And that's all we need to do. You could add classes or IDs to your inputs and labels, um, depending on how you want to format them or how you're going to be working with them. And we'll see that um, a little bit later. But this is basically all you need to create a simple contact form field. And let's go ahead and save this and go ahead and preview this in Chrome. And I'm going to go ahead and whoops preview in Chrome here and go to the contact page and you can see there's full name there's the label and there is the text box and we also can see there's a number right here and that again is because we're using an ordered list but just like we could take the bullets off of our menu items we can take the numbers off of these list elements and again the OL li is there just simply to format the item and now i'm going to go ahead and put in um, my additional form fields so i'm going to go ahead and highlight that and i'm just going to copy it and paste that in there and the next field i want to go ahead and be email so i'm going to go ahead and change the label whoops And again, it's going to be a text type input, but the name needs to match. So I'm going to go ahead and type in email right there. We'll go ahead and paste that in again. And the next one is going to be for the phone number. So we'll go ahead and do phone right here. And then we'll change the name to match in the input field. And we have one more field that we want to add in our submit button. 
before we do that, let's go ahead and save our file and preview it in Chrome. And we should see we now have those three fields in our form. Now, another type of field that you can include in your um, form is a text area field. And this is the type of field that you're going to use for like a message field or a comment field. The maximum number of characters that can be placed in a regular text field is usually limited to 255. But you can put as many characters as you want into a text message, um, or I'm sorry, into a text area field. So that's what we're going to go ahead and create for our message. Again, I'm going to go ahead and type in a list item to contain that and I want a label for my message so I'm going to go ahead and type that out just like I did before and now here's where the difference is this isn't a normal input field this is a text area field so I'm going to go ahead and do text area but then I'm going to go ahead and add um, my same items on there. I'm going to go ahead and type in name and then message because I want to link that text area with this message right here. And I don't actually need to use the type area because I already know what type this is. It's a, um, um, a text area type. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that off. And then I'm going to go ahead and close my text area tab. And let's go ahead and save this and again preview it in Chrome. And let's see how it's looking. You can see that this is automatically a little bit taller. Again, everything's unformatted, but you can see how I can expand that and make that as large as I want um, for the message or the comment field. So the final, and I'm going to go ahead and close these off here. So the final thing we need to do is we need a button so that when the person is finished um, filling out the form, they're actually able to send us the form. And that's called a submit button. And again, I'm going to go ahead and put that button in a list item. Everything needs to have some structure so you can format it properly um, later. And this is, again, an input field. And the type in this case is not going to be text, it's going to be submit. We're making a submit button. And we want to give this a name as well. I'm going to call it, name it submit, just like that. And a new attribute that's specific to this type of uh, input is going to be the value. And the value attribute needs to also be set to submit. And then we're going to go ahead and close that off. Another thing um, you've probably noticed at this point is that I haven't closed these input tags. I did close the text area tag, though. You don't need to close your input tags. You can just put a closing bracket, and that's perfectly valid um, markup. But for the text area field, that you do need to put the closing tag with the slash on it. So we'll go ahead and save that. And that's just one of those idiosyncrasies of the way HTML was developed. And now let's go ahead and take a look at this. And you can see I now have a submit button. Now, the submit button that's right here, when I click that button, Basically, what I'm telling the form to do is to go ahead and perform whatever action is set for this form. So whenever you click a submit button, basically what you're saying is come up here and look at the action field and do whatever is in there. Now, the doing whatever is in there is a function of a script. Now, your um, web host should provide you a script that processes forms and sends them to you as um, email. 
in our case, we're using GoDaddy as our host. And the name of the script that GoDaddy provides you is webformmailer.php. Webformmailer.php. And this script should be in the same folder as your form is going to be in. And again, I'm in my root directory here for my contact form. So right in the root directory, we're going to go ahead and find our web form mailer.php. And again, that is um, a function of your web host. So you need to get the script that they use um, for processing forms. And we can just simply highlight and copy that and paste that into the action field right there. So whenever I click submit, my browser looks at the form tag, finds the action attribute, and executes whatever script is in that attribute. In this case, the web form mailer script. And that web form mailer script tells your web server to go ahead and take the contents of this form and email it to you. Now, if you don't see web form mailer here, um, or whatever um, script your host provides, you can go ahead and go to the remote server right here, and you'll see any files that they've placed in your directory. And in this case, I do see the web form mailer. And if I wanted to pull that down so I could use it, I would just go ahead and, whoops, I slipped off of it. I'd right click on that and select get. And that will pull that file down for you. And then you should see it in your um, local directory. If you don't know how to um, set up hosting, I have a couple of videos for you on that. And there's a link in the description of this video um, where you can get a discount for GoDaddy hosting. I'm going to go ahead and switch back into Chrome here. And this is my channel homepage, youtube.com slash create the net. And if you scroll down a little bit underneath the playlist, you're going to find a playlist called how to publish your website. And if you select that, the two videos that you need to watch on registering a domain and setting up web hosting are right here, part one and part two. You don't need to watch part three because you're not using Microsoft Expression Web. We're using Dreamweaver. So you're going to want to go ahead and um, watch these two videos right um, here to get that web hosting set up. If you want to get a discount on your GoDaddy hosting, if you go to timothytraining.net and scroll down on the right hand side, you're going to see domain registration and web hosting services. Just click this ad right here and GoDaddy will apply all the different discounts, not just the ones in the ad, but all the different discounts that they offer um, Timothy Web Design. So um, that will give you a good discount on your um, um, services through them. And actually when you set up web hosting with them, usually they give you your domain for either 99 cents um, or that it's um, entirely free. So you can get a good deal on GoDaddy hosting um, right here. Now, at this point, you should have your form all nice and set up and working. The last thing that we need to do in our form is place some special hidden fields. And form hidden fields basically give the form processing script some information about what it needs to do. And I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste the ones in that you need to place in for GoDaddy. And again, your host may have some different fields that they want you um, to go ahead and um, add. But these are the GoDaddy fields. And the first one that you want to put in is just this right here input type hidden, name, subject, value, submission. The second field that you should go ahead and put in again, it's a hidden field, 
but you can see the name here is redirect and the value I have here as thank you .html. and this is going to be whatever page you want the person to go to after they click the submit button if you don't include this line then the when they click submit it'll just stay on the contact form and the person may not know that they actually successfully submitted um, the form I haven't created thank you.html, but that would be simple enough to do just by creating a new file and um, applying uh, the template to it. The third input field that you're going to go ahead and add here is the form order tab. And I have it set here for alpha. So there'll be an alphabetical order. The fourth one um, is form the form delivery hidden field and we can set it for hourly digest here that means that instead of every single time immediately when somebody clicks submit instead of the server processing it it's going to batch them all together and send them to you in an hourly um, 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 group um, and really that's only necessary if um, you're getting a lot of email through your um, um, through your contact form. If you want to get the emails immediately as soon as the person clicks submit, just omit this line. And then the final hidden field that we're going to put in is the form format field. And this is the format of the email that's going to be sent to you. I have the value here set for HTML. You could type in text there if you just want a plain text. Um, um, email to be sent and actually one thing I think I forgot to mention here the form order alpha if you want the form field sent to you not in alphabetical order but it just whatever order if you've placed them on the form again you can just re um, you can just omit um, this line right here we need to do one more thing and that's I'm going to go into my hosting account inside of GoDaddy and you need to tell GoDaddy where to send the form email so when somebody clicks submit GoDaddy processes of that web form mailer script and it sends the form contents as an email we still haven't set up what email that material is going to go to and you do that by again just going into your hosting account inside of GoDaddy and come down here underneath tools and we're in options and settings and come down here to tools and you'll see form mail and if I click on that it's going to bring me to the form mail um, settings and you want to put the email address that you're going to go ahead and use for this form in this field right here also, if for some reason or another you don't have the web form mailer script available to you, if it isn't um, in your um, um, hosting account, you can check this button here and it will reinstall that script for you. Um, so you'll need to fill out both of these elements. Now, once you're certain that your form is set up and is actually functioning when you click submit that you actually get an email the next step is to set up whatever kind of validation rules you want to use with your form in the case of our form we're going to set up some simple validation rules that actually just require that somebody enter the information into that field making it a required field um, but you want to make sure that the form actually works before you start working on that and the reason for that is if the form isn't working at this point you know that there's something wrong with the way you set up the HTML after you set up the validation if it's something isn't working you know okay it was working before I set the validation up it must be something in the validation rules that I set up that's preventing the form from actually um, working so you want to test this form every step along the way and that's what we're going to actually do in the next video is we're going to go ahead and set up um, the validation rules 
for this form. So I'll see you in our next Dreamweaver tutorial video.